Welcome to Worship on May 17th, 2020. I'm Pastor Chris, and with me today is Kathy Bonzel, our Christian educator, Pastor Kaylee, and Blake Hoppus, our Minister of Music. You can find the program for today's service in the links uh, below the video, and our announcements are there as well. If you need some extra support during this time, please reach out to one of the pastors in our church. We'll be glad to do what we can to support you. Um, and if you need food support right now, please reach out to the Northern Lehigh Food Bank or the Parkland Cares Food Pantry. Our church supports both of those uh, ministries, and they will be glad to help you. And if you want some assistance doing that, again, please contact a pastor to help you. For those of you who are able to donate food right now, we're collecting food and toiletries again for the Northern Lehigh Food Bank and the Lehigh Conference of Churches. Um, and you can place those items on the bins on the North Neff's entrance of the church. They'll be outside, it's a no contact drop off and you can place those items there anytime on Saturday and Sunday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, we collected over 120 pounds of food and donations last week, uh, our first weekend kind of back doing this. And so we just, we want to thank you and say, way to go church, you're awesome. We will be worshiping online next Sunday at 1030 as well as the rest of May. We will have special music and a time to remember those who have died in military service as well as give thanks to all those serving and who have served. We will have virtual coffee hour today after church from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. If you receive our weekly emails, the Zoom login information is there. You can log in on your laptop or call in by phone. If you didn't receive the information, please text or email Pastor Chris or me and um, let us know that you, that you would like it and we will be more than happy to offer it to you for when worship is over. On May 31st, we'd like to celebrate and honor all of our graduates graduating from high school, college, or other advanced degrees. So please either email me your information at pastorkaley at unionucc.org or use the link in the bulletin, which will take you to a Google form, which compiles all the information for us there. As far as we know, our June 27th Iron Pigs baseball game is still on, so there's still time to get tickets. Please make sure you contact John Snyder Samuelson for that information and to order tickets. We absolutely 100% miss being together with you all in person, and we send our love and our prayers to each and every one of you during this time. But let's remind each other of our church's belief and practice of God's extravagant welcome and inclusive love with our greeting, that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey and faith's journey, you are welcome here. Now, please join in singing a joyful noise of our first hymn, How Great Thou Art.
let's begin with our call to worship. We continue with our Easter season because Easter isn't just one day. This week, we are invited to keep Jesus' commandments. To love one another is to keep each other in our hearts. Every week, we remind ourselves why we gather. We are forming a habit of spending time together, breaking bread together, praising God together, and having goodwill for all people. In the account of the early church, they did just that. From the book of Acts, we hear day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all people. We create a temple of worship in our hearts that connects us across boundaries, distance, and time. But as we share this worship, we will stay connected. At the heart of the matter, we are connected through the spirit that makes us one in love. Let us be in a time of prayer. We're going to center our hearts as we, as one to begin. Let's take a deep breath together. And I invite you to place your hand on your heart and let's lightly tap together in a slow heartbeat rhythm. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation, help us to take this time to center on you for you made us, you gave us life and you continue to be with us every moment, every breath, every step. Hear this assurance from God be still, O oh heart, you are not alone. Your feet is shared with me. Come now and calm and center here. You're mine, secure and free. Let's take a, another deep breath, making sure our shoulders and any tensions we feel in our bodies, letting go with the breath. Take one in and out. I invite you to pick up your heart stone or worry stone and touch its surface and let that touch remind us that God's touch is within us, between us, and around us. As close and real as this object in our hands right now is how close love is to us always. Let us imagine letting go of our worries for now into God's heart of love. We offer a prayer of letting go. Into your care, we offer now our worries, fears, and strife. We turn to you and know you're near your light, our love and life. I invite you that if you have a candle sitting next to you to set your heart worry stones next to it and light the candle. Let us hear now the word of God. The resurrected Jesus tells his disciples that the spirit will be with them when he is gone. If you love me and obey the command I give you, I will ask the one who sent me to give you another companion, another helper to be with you always, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot accept since the world neither sees nor recognizes but you can recognize the spirit because the spirit remains with you and will be within you. I won't leave you orphaned. I will come back to you a little while now and the word will see the world will see no more, but you'll see me because I live and you will live as well. On that day, you'll know that I am God. I am in God and you are in me and I am in you. Those who obey my commandments are the ones who love me. Those who love me will be loved by Abba God. I too will love them and will reveal myself to them. That's from John chapter 14, starting with verse 15. Doing the right thing is something we try hard to do. Sometimes doing the right thing is difficult and means that we make sacrifices to make sure we do not harm others. 
We do it because we, because love is the commandment we live by. In this excerpt from an early church letter, we hear the apostle encourage the people to always be ready to share, always be ready to share from their hearts about the source of hope that is in them, Jesus Christ. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear that they fear and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. That's from the first Peter chapter three. How do we sanctify Christ as Lord in our hearts? To sanctify something is to set it apart as holy. Holiness resides within each one of us. It calls us to see holiness in others. It calls us to do the right thing in the name of love, even when the right thing isn't easy. Sometimes the right thing and the hardest thing is to follow the commandment to love our neighbor as ourselves. We often focus about focus about loving our neighbor, but we also must hear the second part, love ourselves. The spirit is in us, Jesus says, and to love ourselves is to love God, and to love, to love the Jesus in each of us, and to love the spirit that is our companion and our helper. Right now, we're going to turn it over to Mrs. Bonzel as a thanks for the Sunday School and Children's Church teachers. But we also want to thank Mrs. Bonzel for all of the hard work and dedication that she puts in to the Sunday School and Education programs here at the church. And we could not do it without her. So thank you so much, Kathy, for all that you do for us as well. Good morning. Today, May 17th, was supposed to be the last day of Sunday School and Children's Church for this year. We would have been celebrating another year of fun and friendships and faith formation. Little did we know that on March 15th, that would be our last Sunday together. But our Sunday School teachers were not about to let that stop them. They have been communicating with their classes through the mail, by delivering teddy bear shaped bread, by texting, and some children have even been logging on to Mrs. Stubman's Sunday school classes through Zoom. We would like today to acknowledge the commitment of our Sunday school teachers. Many of them are here every Sunday teaching our youngest members about their faith and how to show that faith to the world around us. So I'm going to call their names and I would like to them to stand up wherever they are and know that the congregation appreciates them and is applauding them loudly. Dina Carell, Jana Hill, Karen Seelig, Carol Pope, Linda Miracle, Abby Hill, Katie Miracle, Judy Stubman, Susan Steinman, Kathy Mylander, Maria Belts, Candy Wingate, Angie Kuntz, and their husbands Don and Doug, who have helped out occasionally. A very special thanks to Judy Stubman, who is retiring from her Sunday school position after more than about two decades of dedication to our children. She will be deeply missed. I would also like to acknowledge our children's church leaders who share their time and faith with the children one Sunday a month. So, so sorry that our year was cut short. Would the following people please stand? Family members and congregation, let them know your appreciation by wildly clapping and cheering loudly. The Haley family led by mom Jen, Alex Boyle, Shelly Geiger, Jessica McCochi, Abby Bastidas, Deb Topp, Kathy Mylander, Lori Middow, Marianne Pua, Linda Peters, 
Chrissy Shivok, Karen Dojak, Dina Carell, Lisa Wrights, Kim Wagner, and Rhonda Santilli. Thank you. We would not have children's programming without you. I, the staff, and the church are so very, very grateful for you and your commitment. And finally, I'd like to thank Marianne Ulrich, Susan Steinman, and Katie Miracle for their time and love that they shared with our littlest ones in the Little Lamb Nursery. More applause. The COVID-19 separation has been a difficult and a historic time for us. I have been hearing from many that our children, just like you, are really missing their normal routines and their activities, and especially being around other people. We're kind of in a storm right now. My favorite thing after a storm moves away and the sun comes out is looking for a rainbow. In the story Noah's Ark, God placed a rainbow in the sky as a promise and as a sign of hope. There was an article in the morning call in the beginning of April that rainbows were starting to appear on windows and doors and driveways in Emmaus. That wasn't the only place. The idea of sharing rainbows, a sign of hope, has spread around the world. Children are drawing pictures of rainbows and taping them to their windows. They are cutting hearts out in different colors and arranging them into a rainbow. They are chalking rainbow pictures on their sidewalks. Families have started to look for rainbows. I hear also teddy bears on their neighborhood walks. Crayola posted rainbow pictures on their Facebook page this week. And there is another Facebook page, 518 Rainbow Hunt, where families snap a picture of a rainbow that they created and then others search for it in their neighborhoods or in their communities. It's a socially distancing scavenger hunt. So how about if we join the rainbow trend? Spread some hope, share a rainbow. So if you could send me a picture of your rainbow creation, we'll share it with the congregation. Again, thank you from the bottom of my heart to the many volunteers who help run our educational program. I love you all and I miss you. Take care.
I will apologize from the start that it's possible that the sermon is the result of having to spend too much time with my dog Roscoe during this COVID craziness. Maybe you saw last week that I posted that it took several takes for me to record reading the scripture because Roscoe needed to bark at a squirrel while we were recording worship. Well, a special thanks to Kathy Bonzel and Blake Hoppus and Marissa Haney in the office for all that they are doing to plan worship and to lead worship right now. But a special thank you to Pastor Kaylee, who has been doing all of the video editing and posting needed to create a finished product. Uh, Roscoe did not make her life easier last week with all of his barking, that's for sure. I also wanna thank all of you. Uh, we really miss being in church with you. We can't say that enough. Uh, we miss being in church and we miss worshiping with you and uh, walking together every week, every day. Um, and we just think of you all the time. We're also grateful that we've been able to at least be together virtually in worship. Thank you to everyone for their support during this time and for learning new things with us. I know uh, some of you never even went to a Zoom meeting before this time, and some of you probably never even logged on to the church's Facebook or website um, until this time. And so we're just cheering you on and giving thanks for that. I've been humbled and moved also by your words of appreciation and support. Your gracious response to our online worship times um, has been a true gift and a blessing to us as we um, hope that we can hold us together um, during this time. In today's scripture, we hear Jesus trying to prepare his disciples for a really difficult time, a time when he'll no longer be with them. And what he taught them is not only reinforced by our scripture lessons today, but also by simply looking around at life, maybe even our family pet. So I wanna thank Homiletics and the Reverend Wesley Taylor of Tulleton United Methodist Church in Oregon uh, for the concept of the framework of this sermon today. I'll start with a story about a patient whom we'll call Hazel. And Hazel was at the UCLA Medical Center for quadruple bypass surgery. And she had barely been responding and everyone was very concerned about her. So they brought in Coila, a 145-pound shaggy white great Pyrenees dog. And Coila crawled right up on the hospital bed with Hazel and snuggled beside her. It was just a matter of time when Hazel, who hadn't moved a muscle for days, began to pet the dog. And within minutes, she became alert and was smiling and talking and talking about her new friend, this huge dog on her bed. They monitored her vital signs, and before they knew it, uh, her blood pressure had returned to normal. What is it about dogs or pets that evokes such a positive response? Well, I'm not sure that I can always say that about Roscoe, our beagle. He doesn't always evoke that kind of response. In fact, Many times he raises my blood pressure. But many dogs, especially therapy dogs and assistance dogs, are able to pro provide comfort and assurance to humans every day. It's part of their work. It's what they do. It's who they are. Therapy Dogs International screens dogs for personality, obedience, and training, and provides certification for more than 4,500 pet partners who provide service for 350,000 patients in the United States. Whatever it is, we know that some dogs demonstrate loyalty and obedience and offer comfort and a sense of well being for many people. The marks of a loyal and faithful disciple are shared in today's text in verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. The disciples, um, are also on the receiving end of the Holy Spirit, here called the Advocate. Uh, they're on the receiving end of the Holy Spirit's comforting and reassuring presence, 
when Jesus says in verse 16, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. Jesus reminds the disciples that I am coming to you. If we were to have the kind of ministry in churches and in our homes and in our schools and communities that pet partners have in hospitals, what would that ministry look like? What would faithful obedience look like? What would a willingness to be at the side of others as their advocate mean in the lives of those around us? So I found 10 dog truths or lessons that might guide us. The first one, greet loved ones with a wagging tail. Nothing is more important than feeling loved and there's no creature on the planet that does it better than a dog. The wagging tail affirms that we are where we belong. This is our home where we live. We're safe and we're loved. Number two, eat with gusto and enthusiasm. You know how dogs eat. Slobber flying everywhere, licking the dish clean until every last piece is gone. Dogs know that eating is a celebration of life. Breaking bread together is holy. To nourish the body is not a chore, but a sacrament. Animosities are dissipated at meals. Barriers are broken down around tables. Friendships are renewed and strengthened. So eat with gusto. Enjoy all the flavors and spices of creation. Number three, on hot days, drink lots of water and sit under a shady tree. Relax, slow down and enjoy. Give yourself time out, opt out, unplug, get lazy. And number four, run, romp, and play daily. Physical exercise is as important for the soul as it is for the body. No disciple of Christ can be as faithful and effective when the body is run down and health is unnecessarily poor. When we learn how to play and stretch and get in some exercise, we'll feel better from the inside out. And number five, be loyal. Loyalty is a good thing, and if your dog is nothing else, they are loyal to a fault. Loyalty has fallen on hard times. Sometimes loyalty is a critical element of discipleship, for it tells us about our relationship with others. It supports and speaks to how we think of others, our spouse, our partners, our location, our neighbors, our community, our friends. Number six, when you're happy, dance around and wag your tail. I'm wondering if any of you are doing that right now. Thankfulness and celebration are powerful dynamics for successful and healthy living. Gratitude is a gift we give ourselves that enables us to affirm the essential goodness of life. Even when adversity strikes, gratitude helps us maintain perspective and carries us through the low moments. Number seven, if someone is having a bad day, be silent, sit close to them and nuzzle gently. We all have bad days. And that's why we need encouragement and affirmation. When we're depressed, we know that it takes only a quiet word, a gentle touch to help nudge us and bring us around. A dog has that kind of instinct that tells the dog when to be dancing and jumping around and when to just sit there beside you. Words are not always needed or even helpful to, com to convey empathy. A gentle nuzzle will do. Number eight, no matter how harshly you're scolded, don't pout. Run back and make friends. Carrying grudges makes life a drudgery. Making friends, work at that and keep your friends. Overlook faults and assume the best. Don't keep a scorecard of rights and wrongs. Don't take offense. Number nine, avoid biting when a simple growl will do. We do not need to injure others by what we say or do. We can be strong with love 
firm with kindness. And number 10, bark with your buddies. You heard me, bark with your buddies. Barking is an act of commonality. Barking says that we belong together. Barking says that we are in this together and we are one. So I hope these dog thoughts um, brought a smile to your face and also helped you think about your discipleship and your walk with each other and your walk with God. In the three years that the disciples traveled with Jesus, they had incredible experiences together. They learned a lot. They had learned something about love, about faith, about affirmation, about friendship, about ministry, about community, about eating together, about acceptance, about patience and humility. And now as Jesus prepares to lead them, he reminds them of what is truly important. Now I know not everybody is a fan of dogs and trust me on some days, Roscoe is pretty lucky to still be able to live in this house. But it does seem that even if it's only in my COVID stressed brain, that dogs can remind us of some important rules and truths. From one level, dogs seem to be better at being human than sometimes we humans are. Sometimes they might even be better disciples than we can be. So how can we be more humble, more loving, more grateful, more joyful, more kind-hearted? So we're compelled to vow based on this. I will never let my dog be a better Christian than myself. Amen. We've been talking about worry stones and inviting you to have a worry stone. Um, and if you don't, that's okay, but it's just sort of another way to tangibly think about your prayers and your fears, another way to think about how you can Ask God to carry those prayers and fears and worries with you and for you. And so um, we're reminded, as your bulletin says, about Jesus telling the angel, do not be afraid. And those are the words that we try to hear every week and try to um, follow every day. So how are you doing with your worry stone? Or more importantly, how are you doing with your worries and your fears and your stress? How are you finding ways to invite God into all of that right now and helping you carry them? That's been one of my biggest prayers for each of you, for each of us, that somehow we keep finding ways to invite God into this time in ways that deepen our sense and knowing of God's deep love for us and that we continue to remember our place in God's heart. So let's pray. Thank you, O oh God, for a new day and a chance to find rest and renewal for our spirits here. Thank you for the reminder that Jesus shares with his friends that he will always be in their hearts through the advocate, the Holy Spirit. Our hearts are full, O oh God, of heartache and prayers, concerns, and we pray especially for those with medical issues. Please hold and strengthen Ron and Sue Ann and their family, Dorothy, Patsy, Rosemary, Marie, Carolyn, Shirley, Nancy, Sonia, Bobby, Charlie, Rosemary, Charlotte and her family, Laura and her family, Robin, Phyllis, Marilyn, Harrison, Lynn, Nancy, two-year-old, Maverick, Eleanor, Norman, Evelyn, Christine and Gary, Rhonda and her family, Dennis and Debbie. Comfort and bless those who have lost loved ones, the family of Mary, prayers to Sybil, Jerry and Herman on the passing of Alton, and Jack who lost his wife. We thank you, Creator God, for local farmers and food banks doing all they can to support the community. We thank you for our teachers and educators, 
for all the nurses and doctors and medical care providers who are taking care of our loved ones. Hear our prayers, especially for those that are struggling with this time that we're living in. For workers who have lost their jobs, for managers who have to make that call, for leaders trying to make decisions that are best for everyone, for those overwhelmed with work and those without work, for those who are dying and their families and their caregivers. Help our hearts and minds grow in wisdom and grace, O oh God. Help us find new ways to be your church in your heart and hands to those around us. And let's take a deep breath now as we breathe in your spirit, your love, and as we breathe out our worries and our fears. We say and pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks to everyone who continues to send us pictures of yourselves doing the heart sign. Uh, Pastor Kaylee and I, uh, we love, we send them back and forth to each other, whoever receives them, and we love receiving them. It brings a huge smile to our faces and certainly warms our hearts and they make our day. So thank you. Keep sending them. We know there's a bunch of you out there that still need to send us one. And thanks for bringing that joy to us and to each other. And so enjoy seeing each other now as we sing this song. Uh, let's give thanks for each other and pray for each other. Amen. This week, we want to uh, welcome Nate Kern to worship. Uh, Nate will be sharing with you a story about some of the work he's doing right now. He's preparing to do a triathlon in memory and honor of his friend, Kyle. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Nate Kern. I am the son of Doug and Claire. I hope you guys are finding ways to kind of embrace this quarantine and 
and take on a new understanding and appreciation for the love and connection we all share with each other. PK was gracious enough to grant me a couple minutes today uh, just to give a quick little plug on what I'm doing uh, during this time of, of isolation. Uh, next month, it'll be two years since I lost my best friend um, to suicide. He took his own life in June of 2018. And ever since that occurred, I've been really searching for a way to, to pay honor to his life and what his uh, friendship means to me and, and has meant to me over the, the course of my, my life. And that has brought me to the point of July 26th, where I will be participating in Ironman Lake Placid. For those that don't know, an Ironman is a triathlon race. It's pretty much the, the one of the biggest ones you can do. It consists of a two and a half mile swim, 112 mile bike ride, and a full marathon run in that order. I'm trying to really put myself through the ringer physically and mentally just to, to really pay tribute and, and honor to my, my lost brother. With that being said, I have set up the Iron Mind Fund, which is a fundraising effort surrounding this Lake Placid Ironman that I'll be competing in, which is set to raise both money and awareness for the Jed Foundation. Now, the Jed Foundation is a national nonprofit that supplies high schools and colleges with mental health resources and suicide prevention strategies that they can then implement into their own day-to-day -day operations. Obviously something that's very near and dear to my heart is they're gonna help so, so many people like my friend Kyle who, who feel lost, who feel downtrodden, who feel like there's no other way out than, than to leave this earth. And that's something I'd love to help mitigate for not only the people directly affected in the worst way, but for their friends, their family, and, and the community that they're a part of that, that grieve long after they're gone. In addition, we're also looking to raise some money for the Kyle Berkey Memorial Scholarship Foundation. His parents set up uh, a scholarship fund for two scholarships each year granted to kids from his high school alma mater that have participated in one of their theatrical productions, one varsity sport, and they must also write an essay showcasing and kind of detailing what being a great friend means to them. And Kyle was such a, a great friend to everyone he knew, had the ability to just light up any room he stepped in and, and was just a true light of inspiration for, for anybody who was lucky enough to get to know him. So I'm reaching out to you during this time of of crisis and need in, I've had some struggles kind of thinking on how to do that, but asking for money during these times is, is super important for mental health resourcing as people get compressed and compiled and, and kind of barred up in their own homes. A lot of these problems of mental health illness and disorder can become exacerbated. And, and right now during these uncertain times of ever needing to adapt and change, we need to be there to support these people more than ever. So I'm reaching out to all of you, asking if you would be so kind as to, to share our story on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can just search the Iron Mind Fund. We'll pop right up, share it with your family, your friends, your loved ones, coworkers, anyone who might be interested in what we're doing. If you have the means, we'd really appreciate any donation that you can put forward. It's going to an incredible cause that is affecting so many, especially in my generation and the younger generations, and certainly something I feel like is gonna become more prevalent as we proceed through time. I appreciate you guys taking the time to, to listen to me today. And, and if you have any questions, please reach out to, to Pastor Chris, reach out to myself. She can put you in contact with me and, and I can make sure that any of all of your concerns and questions are answered, help point you in the right direction on, on how you can help, how you can spread the word, and even just how to take care of yourself and the ones you love if, if you feel concerned. Um, much love to all of you. Peace, blessings, and uh, I will see you soon. Thank you very much. And now we'll continue worship with our morning offering. Let's worship God with our whole heart, soul, strength, and mind.
Friends, you may not realize that Easter is not just a day. Easter is a season of Sundays that lead up to Pentecost a time where we celebrate the spirit of Christ in the church as the presence of Jesus' work ongoing in the world. During the Easter season, we'll continue to hear more about Jesus' message of what is truly the heart of the matter in our lives. Please invite anyone that you really miss and wish was with you, such as loved ones, families, and friends to join us on Sunday mornings. We'll be gathering online as we have been and you can find us on our website, our Facebook page, and YouTube, our YouTube channel on Sundays at 10.30 a.m. Or watch any time during the week. We have no idea when you watch, so just make sure you do it. And we'll close this time together, and we encourage you to remember that God is always with you, no matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way. God is right beside you, raising you and raising your very life from death, guiding and directing your path. So acknowledge your fear and your worry and know it is as true and holy as any feeling, including joy and hope and love. Take heart, my friends. This is the heart of the matter. And will the people say, Amen.